Hello everyone, thought I'd start with a little bit of uh, the call to prayer, set to music, the Islamic call to prayer. This is uh, jo Professor Joseph Holbrook, we're dealing with uh, religion in Latin America, and this particular segment of our series deals with Islam in Latin America. Uh, this is not from the book by Justo Gonzalez, Christianity in Latin America, which deals strictly with Catholicism and Pentecostalism. But I've added some supplementary material about Judaism in Latin America and Afro-Spiritism in Latin America. And also, I'm now adding uh, Islam in Latin America to round out our course and deal with as many of the religious dreams as possible. So uh, let's jump into our notes. I've got a lot of material here. And let's jump into our notes and try to get through it as quickly as we can. Islam in Latin America. This lecture draws from several sources to give an overview of the primary means of migration of Muslims to the Western Hemisphere. There's basically four that I'll talk about. The flight of Muslims and their descendants from Spain to the New World after 1492 under the threat of death or forcible conversion by the Spanish monarchy. This is a parallel process of what the same thing that happened to the Spanish Jews that fled to other parts of the Middle East or North Africa or fled to Portugal or Latin America under the same threat of death or forcible conversion. West African Muslims who were captured and enslaved uh, and brought forcibly to work on the plantations of the Americas. Among the slave population in Brazil, Cuba, and other parts of Latin America, there was a significant percentage of uh, uh, African slaves that were Muslim. Also, the third one is Muslim immigrants to Suriname, Argentina, and Brazil. These are people who came at the end of the 19th century or early 20th from uh, Lebanon, from Syria, and from uh, also from uh, British, the British India, uh, Hindustan, and we'll talk about those. Uh, this this if is the population team, that was more enduring. The first two Monday. groups Monday. tended to not to track survive or create flourishing communities because all our they were under the pressure of, HR, of the uh, persecution, brutal Monday. persecution of the Inquisition. Totally and, and of course, that's something the Muslims were also under the boot of their owners. Who I can choose what information I want to track. Considered Muslim Africans to be dangerous. More time for actual work. So they were not given much chance to I develop tried their own culture or pass it down to like their that. descendants. Now we have a tool and then that's fourth, there's a it's current the trend that's quite fascinating. It's projects. not a large trend, but there's, there's so a current much trend of data, Latino conversion to Islam and see highlights from in Latin America and also in the United States. And in South Florida, and Miami-Dade County, it's particularly Cuban converts to Islam. So we'll talk about that briefly at the end of this. So banish Spanish Muslims. In 1492, the Spanish monarch seized Granada, the last Muslim stronghold in the Iberian Peninsula. Yemen. This came after 800 years of religious warfare home. between the Spanish Christians now, I descended well from the Germanic like. Visigoths I and the Moorish Muslims who were Berbers from North Canada. Africa. Our home uh, the Convivencia was uh, sick, a period of time for the worst. a couple hundred years before Food the uh, 1492 ever. mark. Some days These were the golden years of Al-Andalus in Muslim southern Spain under the rule of the Umayyad family, uh, in which there was a period of rare full, harmonious collaboration between Muslims, Jewish, and Christian Yemen intellectuals, the theologians, and scholars. In the this was known as the Convivencia, which in, in, in English would mean the, uh, the living together or the peaceful 
coexistence, perhaps would be the word. We used to have a home. Latino Muslims remind us today that religions, today. cultures, societies that emerged through contact between Spain and, in the camps, and the New World, to between Spanish Spain. colonizers the Yemen, and the Aztecs, Mayas, the Incas, Tainos, and others, cannot fully be understood without country, taking into account the contact food, that first occurred water, between Muslims and Christians aid, in Al Andalus. Refugees Religious war between the Spanish and the Moors seen, radicalized and, and militarized Spanish That's Catholicism. The patron saint of northern Your Christian aid, Spain was Santiago Matamoros, which in English is Saint Donate James the Moor Slayer. USA today. A popular saying during this period of warfare Islamic between Relief, USA. Catholics and the, uh, for a and the Muslims were Adios rogando y con el mazo dando which translated into English means praying to God and bashing their brains out with my mace. Kind of a, a very vivid image of militant uh, Christendom. By 1492, Spanish Catholicism had become militant, and the various kingdoms of Spain were becoming united through the marriage of Ferdinand and Isabella. The Spanish mar monarchy desired to establish one throne to rule Spain and one religion to guide her. Almost, almost made me think of the... Uh, والذين يؤمنون بما انزل اليك وما انزل من قبل وبالاخره يؤمنون اولئك على هدى من ربهم واولئك هم المفلحون ان الذين كفروا سواء عليهم انذرتهم ام لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون
وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون وإن كنتم في ريب مما نزلنا على عبدنا فأتوا بسورة فأتوا بسورة من مثله وادعوا شهداءكم من دون الله وادعوا شهداءكم من دون الله إن كنتم صادقين فإن لم تفعلوا ولن تفعلوا فاتقوا النار فاتقوا النار التي وقودها الناس والحجارة أعدت للكافرين وبشر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أن لهم جنات أن لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار كلنا رزقوا منها من ثمرة رزقا قالوا, قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأتوا به متشابها ولهم فيها أزواج مطهرة وهم فيها إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وأما الذين كفروا فيقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وما يضل به إلا الفاسقين الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك هم الخاسرون كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أمواتا فأحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يميتكم ثم ثم إليه ترجعون والذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا ثم استوى إلى السماء ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهن سبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم عرضهم على الملائكة فقال فقال أنبئوني بأسماء هؤلاء إن كنتم صادقين قالوا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال يا آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم فلما أنبئهم بأسمائهم قال ألم أقل لكم إني أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض وأعلم ما تبدون وأعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتبون وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس أبى واستكبر وكان من الكافرين وقلنا يا آدم اسكن أنت وزوجك الجنة وكلا منها رغدا حيث شئتما ولا تقربا هذه الشجرة فتكونا من الظالمين فأزلهما الشيطان عنها فأخرجهما مما كانا فيه وقلنا اهبطوا بعضكم لبعض عدو ولكم في الأرض مستقر ومتاع إلى حين فتلقى آدم من ربه 
كلمات فتاب عليه فتاب عليه إنه هو التواب الرحيم قلنا اهبطوا منها جميعا فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن تبع هداي فلا خوف عليهم فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون والذين كفروا وكذبوا بآياتنا أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأنتم بعهدي أوفي بعهدكم وإياي فارهبون وآمنوا بما أنزلت مصدقا لما معكم ولا تكونوا أول كافر به ولا تشتروا بآياتي ثمنا قليلا وإياي فاتقون ولا تلبسوا الحق بالباطل وتكتموا الحق وأنتم تعلمون وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة واركعوا مع الراكعين أتأمرون الناس بالبر وتنسوا تنسون أنفسكم وأنتم تتلون الكتاب أفلا تعقلون واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة وإنها لكبيرة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين الذين يظنون أنهم ملاقوا ربهم وأنهم إليه راجعون يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعم عليكم وأني فضلتكم على العالمين واتقوا يوما لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها شفاعة ولا يؤخذ منها عدل ولا يقبل منها شفاعة ولا يؤخذ منها عدل ولا هم ينصرون وإذ نجيناكم من آل فرعون يسرونكم سوء العذاب يذبحون يذبحون أبناءكم ويستحيون نساءكم وفي ذلك بلاء من ربكم عظيم وإذ فرقنا بكم البحر فأنجيناكم وأغرقنا آل فرعون وأغرقنا آل فرعون وأنتم تنظرون وإذ وعدنا موسى أربعين ليلة ثم اتخذ ثم العجل من بعده وأنتم ظالمون ثم عفونا عنكم من بعد ذلك لعلكم تشكرون وإذ آتينا موسى الكتاب والفرقان لعلكم تهتدون وإذ قال موسى لقومه يا قوم إنكم ظلمتم أنفسكم باتخاذكم العجل فتوبوا إلى بارئكم فاقتلوا أنفسكم ذلك خير لكم عند بارئكم فتاب عليكم فتاب عليكم إنه هو التواب الرحيم وإذ قلتم يا موسى لن نؤمن لك حتى نرى الله جهرا فأخذتكم الصاعقة وأنتم تنظرون ثم بعثناكم من بعد موتكم لعلكم تشكرون وظللنا عليكم الغمام وأنتم أنزلنا عليكم المن والسلوى كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم وما ظلمونا وما ظلمونا ولكن كانوا أنفسهم يظلمون وإذ قلنا دخلوا هذه القرية فكلوا منها حيث شئتم رغدا ودخلوا الباب سجدا ودخلوا الباب سجدا وقولوا حقا نغفر لكم خطايا وسنزيد المحسنين فبدل الذين ظلموا قولا غير الذي قيل لهم فأنزلنا على الذين ظلموا رجزا من السماء 
So they, uh, the British took over Trinidad and they were at equals and Fulas, which were about 10% of the uh, slave peoples of Trinidad. Barbados, Jamaica, and Trinidad, they British characterized African Muslims as possessing greater skills or knowledge than the other In the early 1880s, many captives were Mande speakers from Upper Canada. However, by the early 1800s, most were Hausa or Yoruba, called Mando between the 1750s and 1850s, the Aruba made up half of the captive ship from this region to the Bight of Benin. Uh, Benin. By the way, Yoruba also contributed to the formation of Santa Ria and Cuba and Candomblay and Brazil. Salvador de Bahia, 1835, this is one of the most well-known cults coordinated by uh, African Muslims which shook Salvador de Bahia to its core in 1835. The rebellion is truly believed to be led by Malays, a generic label for African Muslims in Brazil. In 1835, the slave rebellion best, is best grasped as an African uprising with Muslim leadership and African born non-Muslim rank and file soldiers. Based on the police and court records, Islam furnished the predominant ideology and language of the 1835 rebellion and attracted Africans of diverse ethnic and religious backgrounds. In the second half of the 18th century, the British had become a rising power since the early 19th century. They began enforcing an act, a British act in 1807, abolishing the slave trade. Of course, there was a political self-interest in this move because it justified their seizure of suspect vessels, which were actually under the jurisdiction of the Spanish rule of Caribbean. And the so this gave some legal cover for the British to interfere with the, uh, with the Spanish and, and Brazilians. Not that it was a good thing to outlaw the slave trade. Nonetheless, Cuban and Brazilian slave trades continue to flourish. Uh, African Muslims in Brazil continue to pray and congregate together during this time in 1865. An account of their practices was penned by Abed al Rahman al Baghdadi. He was an Arab Ottoman subject whose ship unintentionally landed in Rio de Janeiro. And so he toured the city wearing his turban. Uh, he was surprised to be a black man dressed as a Frank, which was an uh, Ottoman term for a Western Arab, who greeted him with Asalama which is the uh, Muslim greeting that God gave him. After they prayed together and found an Arab Portuguese translator, Al Baghdadi, Al Baghdadi learned that these facts came from. Bilad al Sudan, an African, numbered approximately 5,000. From the 1890s to the 1910s, African Muslims maintained an ongoing presence in what is now called Latin America and the Caribbean. Sometimes they openly defied the status quo or were suspected of doing so by imperial authorities. This brings us to Suriname after the abolition of the slavery. There was a new slavery shortage, obviously because slavery was now illegal in most countries. And so in this time period, 1898 through 1904, uh, several countries had to look to immigration to fill the needs for their labor, their labor needs. And one of these was Suriname, which was a Dutch colony until 1975. And so in Suriname, they began to form an agreement with uh, India and began to encourage immigration from uh, Hindustanis, which was from the area of India that had been part of the mobile and the Dutch planters in Suriname welcomed such contract laborers who replaced them in Rio African slaves. First, the sugar and maybe the coffee and cow plantations. Most of these immigrants never returned to India, even after their contracts expired. Endowed with a small plot of land, they became independent farmers. By the 1920s, some had taken up professions such as shopkeeper 
featured on others were involved in small trade. They also started identifying as Hindi status. And they were atheists. What's interesting about this group is that they emphasize the ethnic similarity rather than the religious difference because this group was made up of both Hindus, both Hindus and Muslim Hindustanis. Uh, so they they came together based on their ethnicity as Hindustanis rather than their religion, which would have divided them between Hindus and Muslims. Since the Dutch arrived in 1667, ethnicity rather than religion has provided the primary criterion for the organization of society in Suriname. Initially, ethnic, typically referred to as racial distinctions, marked the relations between the colonial planters, the slaves of African origin, and the indigenous Indian population. The two largest communities in contemporary Suriname are the Hindustanis and the afro surinamese known as Creoles. In 2004, the Hindustanis formed the largest ethnic group, totaling 135,000 people. And again, the Hindustanis are, are both Hindu as well as Muslim. Historically, there's also a significant Jewish community in Suriname. In terms of religion, Christians form the largest category of, of uh, Surinamese with 40% followed by the Hindus with 19%, almost 20, and Muslims at 13%. But again, that's not how they uh, that's not how they chose to identify themselves. Most Javanese in Suriname adopted Islam and most Creoles identified as Christians. It's interesting that the Javanese from Java became Muslim, but they never became part of the Hindustani community because they weren't ethnically from the same national background. Yet, as we illustrate the case below of the Hindustanis, although important in identity and identification processes, religion did not become a marker of difference that split Hindustanis in Suriname into two antagonistic groups. At least until the 1950s, religion merged into one common ethnic identity as Hindustanis, or otherwise called East Indian Coolies. Muslim East Indians can also be found in British. Guiana, Trinidad, Guadeloupe, Martinique, French Islands, Jamaica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and Grenada. Centuries after the enslaved Muslims, they reintroduced Islam into Latin America and the Caribbean. Like Hindus, Muslims were heterogeneous. They were Saeeds, Sheikhs, Pathans, Mughals, Julah, Julahas, Fakirs, Gosas, and Hajams. Only a few of the British Indians who settled in Suriname were willing or able to maintain contacts with India. By non 1916, ships stopped bringing new migrants from India. Immigrants increasingly looked upon India as the land of their ancestors, somewhat like uh, U U.S. citizens might look at Great Britain today. By 1921, Hindustanis, both Muslim and Hindu, constituted a separate ethnic community that identified neither with the Christians and white Dutch population, nor with the Creoles or Javanese. By 1927, the British Indian aliens were formally recognized as Dutch subjects in colonial Suriname. Substituting British India, the Netherlands now became the official motherland for most Hindustanis. In the 1920s, Muslim leaders established ties with religious bodies not only in British India, but in South America, principally in British Guiana and Trinidad. I've already mentioned about their common ethnic identity as opposed to a divisive religious identity. Their shared Muslim identity was a less powerful unifier than class, language, customs, culinary traditions, and shared historical experiences among Hindu and Muslim Hindustanis. This brings us to Argentina. And we'll also talk about Brazil. I'm just going to skip over some of this because uh, it's just becoming long. But uh, the primary presence of Muslim, Muslim presence in Argentina traces to Arab migration waves in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. There was a labor shortage. There was also a huge number of uh, Italians and uh, 
East Europeans that also immigrated to Argentina during this time, including Jews. Most of the Syrian Lebanese that were arriving in Argentina were actually Christians, but a small minority of them were Muslims. Among the Shi in Argentina, Iran emerged as a new religious and symbolic frame of reference. In the 1990s, there were several terrorist uh, uh, attacks in Argentina, and the media attempted to blame Muslims for the bombings of the Israeli embassy in 1992 and the Jewish Community Center in 1994, both of them in Buenos Aires. I believe since then it's been proven that, it, uh, that the, the state of Iran was behind those attacks. I'm not sure about that. Uh, you have to check that out. The negative portrayal of Muslims in Argentine press thus began long before the attacks of September 11, 2001. Media attention also moved to, from Argentina to the Triple Frontera, which is a so-called tri-border area between Argentina, Brazil, and Paraguay, where there's a lot of criminality and corruption and mafia. Since the late 1990s and early 2000s, the dominant media narrative framed the Triple Frontera as a dangerous place inhabited by Muslim immigrants who are connected with terrorist cells. There's also an ever-growing phenomenon of religious conversion to Islam among Argentines without Arab ancestry. Again, we mentioned that uh, contemporary trend earlier. Up to half of the membership in some ent entities are uh, Argenti Argentines who have converted to Islam, Latino Argentines. The number of Muslims in Argentina is estimated to be more than 700,000, uh, 160,000 in Greater Buenos Aires alone. However, that can break down. If you break that down into categories, there might be 700,000 Muslim descendants. But those who recognize themselves as Muslims but not practicing might be 300,000. And those who do practice religion faithfully might be, only be 50,000. There are Shia, Sunni, Alawite, Druze, and Sufi Muslims in Argentina. So we can say that Islam in Argentina is diverse and fragmented. Here's a picture of the Islamic Center in Argentina, Centro Islamico de la República Argentina, CIRA. And here's also the Al Ahmad Mosque, which is considered to be the first truly authentic mosque in Argentina because it was built in the traditional architectural style in 1986. In Brazil, it's, it's pr very much the same. It, the Brazilian Muslim part, uh, Brazil has a large Muslim population, and they arrived similar to the uh, Muslims in Argentina in the late 19th century by successive waves of migration from the Middle East. Syria, Lebanon, and Palestine, and by the conversion of Brazilians to Islam. So Latinos, or Latin Americans, Argentina, Brazil, and other countries, not only are converting from Catholicism to Pentecostalism, or in some case participating in Afro-Spiritist religions, but there are also some degree of a trickle of uh, conversions to Islam. Uh, Muslim communities are mostly urban, and according to the 2010 National Census, the largest are located in Sao Paulo, Foz de Iguazu, Curitiba, San Bernardo do Campo, Brasilia, and Rio de Janeiro. As most Muslim immigrants to Brazil come from the Middle East, mainly Lebanon, Syria, and Palestine, they are identified with the large Arab community in the country. When you say Arab identity, Again, you're talking about an ethnic identity as opposed to a religious identity because Arabs might be Christian, they most likely Muslim, but not always. Or they might be uh, Jewish. As was the case in Argentina, the majority of Arab immigrants were Christian, Marianite, Melkite, and Orthodox, with Muslims constituting around 15% of the total. Here's a uh, Friday sermon at the Mosque of Light, Mesquita Gilus, in Rio de Janeiro. Since 2008, a delegation from the Muslim community has participated in the annual march against religious intolerance, where it shares with other religious traditions, such as Catholicism, Judaism, and African-Brazilian religions, such as Candomblé and Umbanda, a space of belonging to Rio's religious imaginary. I personally find it interesting that the, it does not mention even Helicos or Pentecostals participating in the uh, 
march against religious intolerance uh, because Pentecostals and even Helicos tend to be much more exclusionary uh, and more unwilling to uh, make common cause with these other religions. A new mosque was constructed in 2007 called, called the Mesquita da Luz, which I sh we showed in the uh, picture above. Um, and then below we have representatives of the Sunni Muslim community of Rio de Janeiro at a march against religious intolerance at Copacabana Beach. There's also, as I said earlier, there's evidence of uh, a trend of contemporary Latino conversions to Islam in the United States as well as in Argentina and Brazil and elsewhere in Latin America, even in Cuba. In Chapter 11 of the edited book, Crescent over another horizon, Islam in Latin America and the Caribbean and Latino USA. In this chapter, Mirsad Kurestorik traces the history of Islamic communities in South Florida, both ethnic immigrants and Cuban converts. He comes to the conclusion that although there is an Islamic community of Latino converts, mostly Cuban, in South Florida, the numbers have been greatly exaggerated by the media and they tend to stay isolated or separated from ethnic Muslim immigrants. And uh, I'm going to post this chapter as a PDF separately. If you want to read it, it's suggested reading, but not absolutely necessary. You will not be tested on it. And so this brings us to the end of this segment on Islam in Latin America. It's important, I just wanted you to understand, it's important that you understand how religiously diverse Latin America is, even though you might have the impression that it's homogeneously Catholic or has been traditionally. Okay, nice to talk to you all. Tomorrow we're supposed to have the arrival of Tropical Storm Ada. I hope it stays a tropical storm and doesn't get more serious, stay safe. Stay home, stay healthy, and uh, hopefully we'll be in touch again next week. God bless. Dios les bendiga.